Okay, so we're back um, with the LT298, or excuse me, LT358, um, aka the uh, a bunch of different things, uh, GA2S, and um, there's some FRS activity right there. So this is. So this is just kind of to demonstrate the. Um, the use of, of, of FRS. Basically what you want to do is, let's say that instead of trying to program some radios to talk to other radios that you have, you want to reprogram your radios so you don't have to suffer uh, interference from other users. You've got 16 channel radios. Here's what you do. Um, if they are hard programmed with the frequencies like this in order, um, you can the first thing you want to do is you want to change the tone. Uh, you do not want to use the default tones. Uh, the default tones. You'll notice a pattern. And then there's DCS. If you avoid using these tones, you will find that a lot of these um, radios are, uh, well, a lot of the tones are on. Um, if you go to HF Underground, there's actually a list of tones to avoid. So go to the HF Underground wiki, um, type in FRS, and then hit tones to avoid. And I have a list here of all of the tones that are commonly found on each, and DCS tone, or DCS code that are commonly found on each of the 22 FRS frequencies. So avoid using these, these tones, these, these codes or subchannels, whatever they're called. Um, 67.0 is the default for a lot of radios. They come out of the box with 67.0. Uh, if you leave your radio in, um, in tone mode, uh, you're going to transmit a tone, but you're going to hear every transmission on that frequency, regardless of the um, uh, whatever the you know the setting is. You're going to transmit the tone, but you're, you'll hear everything. So another thing that is good to do is to do a um, survey of not only what are the active frequencies in your area and which channels are active in your area, um, but what tone or codes are they using um, and kind of you know do this for a while um, also remember that channels 8 9 10 11 12 13 and 14 FRS channels um, 8 to 14 are low power channels 500 milliwatts um, they generally have less activity on them than channels 1 through 7 and to a lesser extent channels 15 to 22. Channels 15 to 22 are also used for GMRS repeater outputs. So that's another thing to keep in mind. You may have a GMRS repeater in your area that uses one of those frequencies um, as an output. And uh, you want to avoid using that frequency for simplex use if possible, because the repeater um, will usually send us pretty strong signal if it's local to you. So once you've kind of made, have an idea of, of you know, who's using what channel in your channels in your area, um, you can kind of put together a list of these are the channels or these are the tones that are used on these channels. And then you can compare that with a list of the default frequency, default tones for each frequency channel and the, um, you know, the most commonly heard ones. Uh, and then you can kind of say, okay, well, these are the tones that are not used and you can make a kind of a channel plan from there. Um, this is the best way to do it because I can tell you that in my area there is a downtown user um, of FRS channel 7 462.7125 and they use 159.8 which is a non-standard tone. However, it is available in lots of radios as at one of the 50 
uh, tones or 50 codes. And if you look at the, the list of codes in order or tones in order, it's code tone number 27. So their radio display says 727, which, boom, that makes sense. Um, another user that I've heard pretty frequently um, uses 151.4 on channel 4. And um, that's tone number 24. So if you look at their radio, it would say 424. Um, so things like that, these, these kind of easy to remember channel combinations are other ones to avoid. Um, the default channels for the uh, radios with uh, 67.0 and then 118, 127.3, 131.8, 131.2, one forty one point three and uh, one forty six point two um, plus uh, one twenty seven point three on channel eighteen and one thirty six point five on channel twenty two avoid using those tones those are the default out of the box tones if you're in an urban area somebody's using those tones on those frequencies it's just a question of when so once you've got that all figured out you want to create a channel plan um, you want to set up your radio so it is doing a narrow FM. You can do the channels in order if you want, or you can put them out of order if, if you have a radio that lets you do that. And you're going to be using radios for you know one specific group, and you don't really have this need to talk to other people on FRS or on the JMRS frequencies. You don't necessarily have to put these channels in order. In fact, I would recommend, you know, putting them in the order of the frequencies that are least used in your area for 1, 2, 3, 4. As long as the end user understands that the frequencies are not in order by channel, and it's an in-group, you know, radio plan, then it doesn't matter. Um, so anyway, uh, you create your plan, and then you hit upload to radio, make sure your radio is turned on, hit OK. Uploading to radio. Oh, okay. For the sake of brevity, I'm only going to do two of these bad boys. Excuse me. So you're done. So now, you unplug. You want to save your channel plan in a chirp. Um, as a, you know, some kind of name that you can uh, you know, remember as your channel plan. So if you have to buy radios in the future and add them, um, you can do so. So I did have it programmed. You can switch this off so it beeps. Every time you change channels, you can switch that off if you want. Um, that is in settings here. So you've got beep. You can turn that stuff off. Battery. Oh, there's another. This is another cool function. The side key. Now you have it on monitor to open up the squelch, but you can, you know, do whatever you want. So we're on channel one. Radio check, one, two, three, four, radio check. Okay, so now we're going to take oops, this guy. <clears throat> so this is for, you know, examples, example purposes. They're on FR, we're on FRS channel one, right? But because we used a non-standard tone, 177.3, you have the you know, green lights coming on because there's a carrier on the frequency, but you're not getting that intermittent interference from some distant user. Um, that's the important thing to take away from this is do not use the default tones. See that side button? Radio check, one, two, three, four, radio check. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is, is you know, when you have a radio that's set for transmit tone only, like this radio is, 
it's going to hear again. Radio check one, two, three, four. It's going to hear everything that's on that frequency. But if it's you're trying to talk to a radio that has a receive tone or receive code turned on, it's not going to hear what. It's not going to open the mic or open the the speaker, open the squelch. So you're going to get that green light that hey, there's someone on frequency, you know. But you're not going to hear it until you open the squelch. So that's something else to keep in mind. Radio check one two one two. So yeah, these radios have have utility. Um, just you know, it is important to remember that some of them come with the out of the box frequencies programmed in a way that is not legal to use. Um, and uh, there are so many CTCSS codes and DCS tones, DCS codes, CTCSS tones, I should say, available um, and DCS. Uh, codes available that there's no real reason to, you know, bootleg um, on the amateur band or something like that. Um, and, or you can go out and get a, a business radio license. It's really not that difficult. Um, and then you have a lot more options. Um, and I would still recommend using uh, CTCSS or DCS uh, for, for, for business users, uh, licensed business users. But there you have it, the LT458, Shell, AR5, AR6, GA2S, um, the Codon S, or Sed8, I don't even know how you say that, but yeah, BF888S, Claudio.